Hi, I'm Rhett. Uh, currently experimenting with my facial hair, but I'm back to show you a few different ways that you can simply get background images happening in Cinema 4D with Octane Render and make something kind of like this image here. Here we go. Okay, let's get into this. Uh, I've just opened up a new Cinema 4D window. What I'm going to do immediately is open up uh, a person, going to this Rust 3D guy, it's an FBX, I'm going to open him up, and there he is. Where I found him is I just googled 3D scans of people, went through some search results, found this guy, uh, he, he's apparently free on Gumroad, just um, put in what you want to pay for him or zero in the field and download him. And I put him into my 3D assets folder, so I've got him now. So that's I'll put the links in the description. But that's where I got him. Uh, I'm not even going to put the textures on him. Pretty nice scan. What I'm going to do is just select the material, press delete. See the question mark up here on the object because it can't find a material. I'm going to delete that as well. I'm now going to set some uh, set some project settings so I'm going to disable save check button I'm going to change this to 1920 by 1080 default high definition uh, dimensions change this renderer to octane renderer and then I'll go save it for safekeeping save as um, I just created a C4D folder and I'll call this BG Tutorial. Okay. So let's put in a camera to begin with. I'm going to turn on my Octane viewer. See, there's no lights, nothing, just him set up. So let me go to Objects, Octane Camera turn on that check button so it's selected. Now I'm going to get to the coordinates and a trick to zero out these coordinates. You can either just press zero but and then uh, return but you can also right click on the little arrows and it will zero out. I don't want the Z to zero out. Let's just call this minus 600 in the, the Z depth and drop him down a bit. I also want him standing on something so let's put in a cube. The top right hand button here shows my different view windows. I'm going to drag out Select my cube, drag in the Y axis about there. Looks like it's close to minus 100, so let's just go minus 100. Drag out my view window here. Another trick is if you select the object, press S, it will snap to the full object view. And let's just say I want the size and the Z to be 600 and then I'm going to drag the Z position down to about there and then I want my guy a bit smaller too um, whoops I'm going to press T for scale and I'm going to scale him down to something like, let's say, like that, around about 18 centimeters in the Y height. I'm also going to turn him around. I'm going to press R for rotate. I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to rotate it. Hold down Shift till it gets to 180 degrees snapping. And now he's turned the other way. I'm pretty happy with that. OK, 
going to come back to um, going to come back to my cube. I'm going to oh I undid. Let me redo. Um, edit. No, I've lost my redo. Accidentally pressed undo and it undid the rotation. So let me redo that again. There. Let me press save on that. Okay, so we have a cube. I'm going to fill it that surface. Fill it radius about 10, let's say. Just so it gives a little bit of an edge. Let me zoom in on this one so you can see. Gives a little bit of a filleted edge to the cube. I just want a really basic setup because this is actually about creating the background, not the objects. So, first method. This method is probably one you'll get in the Octane manual if you are um, reading through that. It is to get a, click up here, go to background, double click down here to create a material, drag that onto the background. I'm not sure what happened, but once again, my guy has snapped back. Ah, I see, he's an FBX, so, okay, I've got some animation on this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna select, have all those with the red button selected. Select animation, delete track. So what it was doing was trying to flip back to the FBX animation, so I'm just getting rid of all that. I'm going to put in 180, so then he's flipped around. So I didn't realize he had animation on him, but now I know. So double click my material, um, and just in here, in color, in texture, select this button and grab an image. And you can see it's dropped that image into my um, my perspective view here, but in Octane it has not. So let me just show you. So uh, let me close down that image now. Um, I'll show you where I found that. I just did a Google search for Earth atmosphere, and I found a nice NASA one. Here it is. Here I'll put the link in the description. Uh, most NASA images are public domain. Uh, some some you know require attribution the the rights are here but they're free to use uh, mostly and they're pretty uh pretty easy to find uh, so i just dragged that image in created a texture folder and i just dragged that image into there and then i went and found that so click on the settings in octane i know i usually render in path tracing, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to drop the samples right down to 512 and geo clamp down to, let me just make it 8. And so if I want to see this background, I just have to click alpha channel. And there it is. I've got no lighting in my scene at the moment, as you can see. So what I might want to do is come to Objects, Texture Environment. For the texture, I can just come and grab that same image and now you can see some lighting has been applied to that. So if I come back into the render settings and turn off alpha channel, you can see it's dropped like a spherical sky dome over the entire 
area and you can see that it's not exactly the same as our background it and this method gives a general uh, realistic lighting to our area uh, let me also just so I can show you this effect let me create an a material for the floor let me drop that on the cube already you can see the the glossiness reflecting the sky dome double click on that material I'll come into the node editor I'm just going to create a simple floor for our, uh, our cube so the index I'm going to bump that right up to be like a mirror image I am going to turn off the diffuse and I'm going to put a little bit of a like a, a map a displacement map on there so I'm going to drag image texture I'm going to drag displacement I'm going to plug that into the displacement grab this plug that image texture into the displacement there go and grab this scratch texture that I found and you can see it's applied it there where I found this scratch texture before I forget to tell you is I just did a Google search for scratched texture I found this one here I clicked on the link it took me here and I had a whole bunch I found this one that I thought would be nice and then I dropped that into my texture folder once again uh, select displacement I'm going to up the samples to a thousand the level of detail sorry and I'm going to change this here to follow geometric normals I'm going to drop the detail uh, the height right down to 0.2 because I just want it to give a bit of a, a difference to the <clears throat> to the the, the top of the uh, surface so it's not perfectly mirror there we go, I'm happy with that and so to show you what this dome is doing and so yeah to show you what this dome is doing what I might do is I'll put uh, this texture as a image texture go into the image texture then grab the image again but now I can do UV transform and with the lock aspect ratio ratio selected I can scale down the image so you can see it's now scaled down you can see the tiles that it's creating over this whole sort of dome texture giving light to the image so if I scale that up to let's say what I think is more realistic that is giving a sort of nicely lit background uh, nicely lit uh, surface to our floor um, and if I once again and we've made it similar to our background so if I go once again into the settings turn on alpha channel we have exactly the background and uh, similar lighting around and so it's not exactly it's this floor isn't reflecting exactly this background but we're getting something similar and so you can adjust this this uh, this sky however you see fit you know if you want the you know the floor to reflect something more like that then you can do that and you can have control so that is what is good about this first technique I'm just going to change his uh, I'm not going to put in his proper 
UV textured clothes. I'm just going to put a glossy material on him. Double, double click that octane material. I'm just going to make he, it close to black and the roughness 0.5. Okay. So there you go, that's uh, a first method that, um, you know, you might, it's going to make this a bit thinner, maybe 160 in the X. And I'm going to make him a little bit smaller, just finding the the frame that I'm happy with, maybe 16 in the Y. Uh, so yeah, so the, the background alpha is, is set in stone. I can't move that around um, in my viewfinder, uh, but I can change some of the settings to suit what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, with the sky dome. So that's the first way you can get a background image into Cinema 4D and Octane Render. So let me just um, keep my objects and I'm going to select the sky and the background. I'm going to go Option G to drop them into a grouped folder hold down option, double click those traffic lights there to turn off everything inside. So now you can see I've got no no lighting from the sky and if I come in turn off the alpha channel I'm back to my default scene. Okay, so that was the first way. I wanted to do that just so I could uh, get back to a default scene. The second way I wanted to show you is with a, let's go, a light octane area light. So it's just dropped it in here. I want to press R and then grab this axis, hold down shift and it's rotated 180 degrees and then press E so I can drag it back into the distance a bit. I'm going to select the light again, go to details, I'm going to change the size to 1920 by 1080. So it's obviously huge. Drag that all the way back till we see it sort of, we can see it framed, framed there. And what I'm going to do is select the light, go to Octane Light Tag. In this texture field, just go and grab that same image. Um, the power will be set way too high, so let's go make it 1, so you can see the image there. And then we have to rotate our image. That's not the one. Yeah. So let's rotate that to 180 there. And then let's just position our image. So I'm going in these different viewport windows. I'm just positioning positioning the light. Yeah, right there. So we've literally got one light source. What I also like to do is you can see the light background. If I turn off that light, our default background is just white. What we can do is just grab a HDRI environment Uh, and then I'm going to drop the power to zero and I'm going to turn that light back on. 
So you can see now that the, the guy is not lit by default lighting. There's no sort of background to this light if I drag it down. You know, everything's black. So that is a very simple way also to drop in a background image. Do it with a octane light and put a texture on it. And if I just want him lit up a little bit, what I can do is hold down control, drag up another light, press R, I'm going to rotate that like 90, then up in this window I'm going to rotate this, let's say 70 or 80 degrees, press E, I'm going to drag it across. You can see I've created just another light. I'm going to drag that so it's going to hit him on the side because we've got some lighting coming from the left hand side and then I'm going to select the light and I'm going to bump that power right back up to 100. You can see now how that's affecting the side of his body. I might drag that a bit forward so it's not hitting him so much. Yeah, and there you go. So the good points about this method is it's very quick and easy to set up and you get exact reflections uh, from this background that are mirrored in here. So they're not sort of uh, kind of close like a sky dome. It is exactly reflecting the what is in the background. Cool. So let me save that. That is the second method. And the third method is somewhat similar. Let me grab these guys. I'll do the same thing. Option G. Double click those uh, to hide them all. I've still got my sky there though. Um, so what I'm going... Let me, let me get rid of that sky just temporarily so I can show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up here, select plane, orientation minus Z. So you can see the plane there. Let's change the width to 1920, height to 1080. So once again, we've got a plane the size of our light before. So what I'm basically doing is I am recreating the light as a texture though this time. So I've got my plane, uh, it's right there, all good. If I turn back on the sky you can see everything's dark, there's no light at all. So what I want to do is go to materials, octane diffuse material, I'm going to double click on that, I'm going to come into the node editor I am going, actually first, before I do that, I'm going to come and deselect diffuse because I don't want any diffuse diffusion on this. Image texture. I'm going to load up that image texture, same background, into there. I'm going to go black body emission. I'm going to plug that into the emissions there. Plug that into the texture. And then drag that onto my plane. And you can see it's shown up automatically. Once again, I'm going to change this power. That's because I can see it's blowing out there, maybe half, 50. If I turn on surface brightness and I change that to 1, it's pretty close to the settings of the light panel. Maybe 0.5. So I can do that. You can have surface brightness on or off and just adjust the power to how you see fit. Maybe 0.6. And then once again come to the plane and position that where you like it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to position this one up a little bit closer this time. And there you have it. Once again, 
uh, it's picking up the exact reflections of the background right. so one if I turn back on that sky it's gonna make everything black and no default lighting and I can do the same thing if I um, if I grab that plane I can also yeah let me just do it anyway uh, if I grab that plane hold down control drag it up press R rotate it say 90 degrees press E drag it up you can see where it is there press R again rotate it maybe 60 degrees this time press E I'm going to press this global um, positioning so then I, if I drag across it stays in line oh. ah yeah so if I do with this method and I want to change so it is lighting him up here but it's very weak because I put it on 0.5 in the texture emission Uh, if I go back into my node editor I can show you yeah so it's 0.6 power surface brightness off let me change that back up to 50 much of a muchness pretty similar so the problem here is that this is not enough light to light him up I'd have to be very close to, to be able to see it so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to grab the other light way of doing it. And I could just put a default light in there as well, color that light. It doesn't have to be a, a light panel. But that's the uh, the third method of doing it. And the benefit of doing it that way is now I have a material that's giving off light and I can go into the node editor sorry if I double click the material I can go into the node editor and I can change lots of values in here I can color correct or I can um, change position scale add, add all types of effects to it and can have more control in the node editor but you know, it can be a little bit more fiddly and if you don't need that then uh, you don't have to do that method but there there you have it uh, it's pretty basic and straightforward but it comes in handy knowing those three techniques for all different styles of uh, images you might want to create so I hope that has helped you out and uh, you know I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with um, with this technique Thanks guys, and see you next time.